Hey everybody, Norm from Tested. And Kate from Tested. Welcome back to uh, this mini model behavior series where we are putting together a Star Destroyer. Yay! Woo! A 1 5,000th scale Bandai Star Destroyer, uh, part of their Star Wars line. This is a very highly detailed model. We're, Extremely detailed. We're so impressed by the, the parts that are coming out of this. Um, it's like, Bandai has the stuff that was 144th scale, mm -hmm. like your X-Wings and your tiny Millennium Falcons. They also have like 172nd scale perfect grade Millennium Falcon. I think this has the detail of that, although of course it is a Star Destroyer, so you're 1 5,000th scale. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is part two. We're hopefully going to finish the build today. Mm -hmm. If you haven't seen part one, please go back and watch that. And that's where we prepped all the pieces and got them painted and then experimented with putting on Azteking. Yes, which was so much fun. It's masking and also then working with uh, the color choices to get these two tones of light gray. Yeah. The lightest of grays. If you're using Tamiya paints, uh, what's the insignia white is what insignia we Insignia like. white, yeah. Uh, and they work well. And then that the, the standard light gray primer yes. as the uh, base coat underneath there. And they're just so thin. It went on perfectly. Anything thicker than that, you're going to lose all this really amazing detail in here. So today we are going to do the assembly. There's a whole lighting system inside for this version of the model kit. And we're going to be trying to uh, put that together with the goal of minimizing light leaks. Yes. Uh, which is a thing that can happen if you're not using fiber optics. And then also we're going to be uh, finishing with a weathering pass at the end to accentuate all those details and panel lines. Yeah. Uh, so got the instruction manuals here. I think the first step is going to be setting up the lighting rig. Yep. And we'll get to that and check in when we ha have some, some to show. And you can measure out seven centimeters there. Flat and then I'll wrap it up around. Reasonable, yeah. right? All right, let's check the LEDs. Nice, nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. All good? All good. Oh, see, it uh, makes total sense now. These are the engine LEDs, oh, and that's why they're tinted they're more blue. blue. Okay. Yes, and then this that's is cool. the bridge and the, yes, okay, cool, right. cool, 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 superstructure. All right, our LED uh, light harness is done. Really excited to install that. And now it's time to put things together. The first uh, thing we're putting together is gonna be, it looks like the stand. And so Kate's yeah. gonna take the role of uh, cutting things from the sprue. Yep. You're using. God hands. Oh, these, these are, are the, amazing. They're like butter. Yeah, they're, they're high end uh, nippers just for uh, Bandai style model kits. Mm -hmm. um, and Adam bought a set. Totally worth it in our opinion. Um, of course, we're gonna snip it and then do a little bit of a cleanup yeah. on the pieces. And then I'll get to assembly and let's put the space together. Two of these, one of these, one. Oh, thank you. Like you don't feel any resistance. God. <laughs> You're so cute. Mm -hmm. So it looks like we're gonna start with this one. Okay. I wanna snip. Um, oh yeah, let me snip the edges. Yep. yep. Sorry. Was that twenty one? Twenty one. Right. So it's gonna go over the center here. Let's put it in exactly where they want me to, which is right there. Hmm. Double this. Goes right here, and these are I bet are the walls of this cavity. And then when I flip this around, okay, this is super cool. Uh, before we started putting this together, we talked about wanting to um, kind of block out the light bleed. Like light bleed was something we knew we were concerned about, yep. um, and we were going to think about maybe cutting up some strips of gaff tape. Yep. And it turns out as we're putting this together, they've thought of some of that already. Yeah. And there are these stickers here, black stickers, that then can wrap around 
some of the uh, the inserts. Right, so you just built a little box and installed it, and mm -hmm. now they know that that box has a few light leaks around there. Potentially, yeah, So yeah. you've got a custom sticker that's already cut to size with the flaps that fold around that to block the light from coming out. That's, that's really great. So great, and we can actually show a little bit of that because if we turn on one of the LEDs and put it behind the box, we can actually see that, yeah, there would be, there would be light leak. Yep. And so, that's very thoughtful. We're at a really interesting part of this assembly. Already super fun, parts are really clean. The Tamiya two coats that we put on some of mm -hmm. these pieces actually I think is gonna help with the tolerances, the yeah. lockout. The press fit in exactly. there. Exactly, it's a really tight fit. And it's really cool, like not only do we have some of this black tape that prevents light leaks, but entire pieces as well, I think, are designed here to kind of channel the lights. Yeah. Uh, and there's also reflective tape, so they've really thought this out really well. Uh, one thing we want to do though, because in uh, photos of the original filming miniatures, the lighting isn't all single tone. Right, there are a few spots where you see some really cool like warmer red mm -hmm, lights. Mm -hmm, exactly, so we want to put that in here. We're not doing fiber optics, so one of the things we've read online that people have done for this model kit is kind of tint with uh, the windows with their own gel. Yeah. Instead of using a tiny piece of gel plastic, what we're gonna do is just use some glue. Yeah, we're gonna take white glue, which normally dries clear. Um, it's, you know, everybody has it, it's non-toxic, easy to work with. Uh, and I have just been adding some clear Tamiya paint to it to tint it, and it gives you a really good, um, you know, see-through red appearance that it's like really easy, you put it in, you wait for it to dry, and then it really adds something nice. And it's gonna be such a thin layer, the light's still gonna be able to yep. blast through it, and it's another place where you can get creative because there's no guide for where to put right. those color lights. We're not gonna put a ton, not entire swaths of windows, yeah. but a point here and there, again, just to break up that lighting scheme. And so you'll be working on that while I'll be moving on and actually doing more on this harness to prepare it for inserting into the ship. Perfect.
I think we're about to close up the Star Destroyer, get to the superstructure on the top, the bridge. Um, we're, again, flabbergasted. So impressive, the engineering. The amount of detail, the channels, the score lines showing you where to put the stickers. It's just, it's really fantastic. The wiring of the lights was really intricate too. You know, they give you this, I think this actually is the same lighting pack that's in the Millennium Falcon. Ooh. Um, so they reuse that. So the wires are long, much longer than you need for the cavity of the Star Destroyer. So they gave you lots of tape to shorten things up, exact measurements of how to bundle. Yeah, in, down to the millimeter. Totally. Uh, and then places where you can tape them to the top and uh, bottom parts of these frames. And the frames actually box the light in really yeah. well. We thought we were gonna have to be combating a lot of light leakage, but in the test when we're looking at it, like I'm not seeing much. Yeah, so we're gonna leave the lights on for the rest of the build because why not? They look gorgeous. So in a second, I'm gonna flip these on. Bam, and bam. So the Star Destroyer is lit up. We're gonna close. Check out these engine lights. Oh, so cool. And that goes in there. And like Kate said, check out those sweet, sweet engine lights and bridge lights here. So this gets closed up, um, and we're literally the last two pages of the instructions for assembly. I'm gonna build that bridge. Uh, then we'll get to weathering. So there we have it, one technically assembled Star Destroyer. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. It's so good. <laughs> but we're not done because uh, we need to accentuate the panel lines. In my opinion, you're never done until you've done a, even the mildest weathering pass. And we were discussing this because it technically it's in space and you don't have the same type <laughs> no of weather in space. <laughs> aging that you would have, but you know, there's gonna be some type of engine burn. We yep. definitely wanna have the, the contrast. There's so much, like we said in the beginning, of these shallow uh, pieces of paneling. Mm -hmm. um, what's our approach? Because we could, there's so many different ways. Right, um, now one of the things that we were thinking here is Normally I would use some sort of a liquid wash, but that pools in a way that really evokes gravity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I thought, and especially because we want to be really mild, that we would do a powder weathering pass. One of the things I really like to do is use these um, milk pigment powders. And they come in a whole array of colors. This is my final pass on the blimp weathering was done with these. So what I've done here is, uh, just to test it out, I did you know a solution, a, a mixture of black and white to give us a good gray. And um, my technique, normally I would use a big acid brush. This thing is so small, you don't want to. Uh, I take a dry brush, try to knock some stuff off of there. You do a bit of a brush on top, then immediately take a clean brush, knock some of that off, as much off as you can, and you'll notice that it's actually really heavy. So I go in with a wet cloth and try and wipe off as much from the surface as possible. It's gonna only leave behind something in the crack, so. That's what we want. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, while we were very impressed by the, uh, the light blocking systems that were put in the kit, including these plastic shells uh, and also that black tape, uh, like you see, for example, along the sides here, it's pretty good. I don't, don't see a lot of warping no. at all, especially the back. Right? Yeah. This clamshell here, there would normally be a lot of leakage, mm -hmm. but you only see in the engines. That's very impressive. The superstructure itself and the bridge has a little bit of warping. So 
you can see it popping off a little bit on top of there. So what we're going to do is kind of to put in our own black tape yeah. uh, to seal it up. And something to keep in mind if you're going to use black tape to block out light, take a look at the back of the tape because yeah. especially something like black gaff tape, it might be black on the surface, it's white on the bottom. So find maybe a black paper tape where it's just black both sides. So why don't I start on the superstructure and then you can start on the ship. Maybe start on the bottom until you figure out the process sure. you're happy with because yeah. we'll see that less and then we'll slowly move our way toward the top. So I started to notice that as I was brushing off the excess pigment, it was just wanting to smear around there because it really is just trying to grab onto every surface it can. And then especially when you put the wet rag onto it, you're, you're taking a dry pigment, adding liquid, that makes paint. So my new strategy is I took a very fine brush and I'm very specifically going over the areas I want, like especially these panel lines. So I get them in, trying to go only where I want them to go. Then I take a blowing tool. You can have an air hose, canned air, whatever you want. I guess you can just blow it with your mouth. And I'm blowing off the excess. That way there's no surface contact. You're not smearing it across. And then anything left on top, you can very lightly use your wet cloth to get off. I think it's a much more subtle look and I'm really happy with it. And it's done. Kate, so much fun. It was a lot of fun. And it, what a difference all the little bits of work we did. Made. Oh yeah, I, it's hard not to go extra heavy. And I honestly, I think we could go a bit heavier on this, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. but we wanted to keep it light, showcase off the beautiful craftsmanship that this kit came with. Totally, uh, the aztec was really fun um, and the weathering pass, really free form. I am sold on this pigment powder. Yeah, isn't it great? I think like if we're not going for, like you said, the drippiness mm -hmm. and things kind of accumulating, uh, then that makes it look like it's, in, it's like a model miniature that's been sitting in storage for, you know, 35 years. Yep. Lovely, lovely kit. That's the Bandai 1/5000th scale Star Destroyer. Uh, there is a version of this that does not include the lights um, or the clear parts, and mm -hmm. we didn't end up using the clear parts. But I think the lighting kit, if you don't want to go with fiber optics, is totally amazing. Definitely worth it. Uh, it's so gorgeous. Yes, gorgeous. And the holes are in uh, both kits, so if you want to use your own lighting, uh, you still get the benefit of the molds having the, the holes in them. Uh, we'll be back with more model behavior projects in the future, more model making projects. Uh, if you've built other Bandai kits yourself, we'd love to see them in the comments below. But other than that, we'll see you next time.